Okay, are you ready? Watch this. Look at that! Oh, Holy! Oh, oh my god. Oh, guys, we're gonna get, we're gonna get some. Whoa! Welcome to one of the coolest places in Michigan. That clip was filmed in June 2021 at Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. It, to be totally clear, it is not my clip, I used it with permission, but it is hilarious and awe-inspiring and kind of startling, and it's also where I want to start a story. So Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore is an absolute treasure. There are more than a dozen miles of cliffs here, more than a dozen waterfalls, and also views like this. But this is also a place with some pretty incredible history. Because if you want to know how you get a landscape that looks like this, you have to go back in time. You have to journey past ancient highlands, long forgotten seas, mile high glaciers, and also an ancestral Great Lake. Really, it's a fascinating story about just how dramatically the Earth has changed over time, and also how much it's still changing. So let's go on an adventure, because if you want to get these cliffs, you have to start with some lava about a billion years ago. As you might guess, the Earth back then was, um, wildly different than it is now. Land, plants, and animals hadn't evolved yet, the air wouldn't have been breathable to us because there wasn't much oxygen in it, and also Earth was spinning faster, so days were around 19 hours long instead of 24. At this time, in this weird alien Earth, the land that's now Michigan was part of a landmass called Laurentia, and Laurentia was tearing apart. The Earth's crust was splitting here, and with it came an outrageous amount of lava. Geologists now call this event the Mid-Continent Rift, and it set the stage for the pictured rocks. Because eventually, the lava stopped, the Earth's crust stopped splitting, and the lava cooled and hardened into dense, heavy rock. In fact, that rock was so heavy that the Earth's crust started to sag, forming a basin in the vicinity of modern-day Lake Superior. And that basin is where we'll pick up the story of the pictured rocks. So millions of years after the mid-continent rift, the land still looked pretty barren. Land plants and animals, no, they, they still hadn't come along yet. Air, nope, still not breathable. And the Midwest continued to look pretty different from what we see now. Notably, an enormous highland stretched from Wisconsin across Michigan and into Canada. And as the years went on, rivers and streams flowed from that highland down into the basin left behind by the Mid-Continent Rift. That water carried along sand and sediments just like rivers do today, and over time that sediment collected in the basin and eventually solidified into rock, a type of rock we call Jacobsville sandstone. If you've been around this channel a bit, that is the infamous Bacon Rock back once again. Jacobsville sandstone is the oldest rock layer you can see at Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. You can generally recognize it by its red and white coloring, and we spotted it around the Sable Falls area, and also at a few places along the water, mostly along Grand Island. But really, you don't see a lot of this stuff, and that's because as time went on, wind and waves actually eroded millions of years worth of Jacobsville sandstone. It's a piece of Earth's history that's more or less lost to time, so along the pictured rocks you'll generally just see it peeking above the water. The vast majority of the cliffs you'll see at the park are made from something called the Munising Formation, and that has a pretty different story. It's a lot more watery. So in geology, a formation is just a distinct unit of rock, and this one is further broken down into a few additional layers. As a quick caveat here, I will say that some geologists call these layers different things. I've chosen to go with the original naming convention here, mostly because that's what I saw the National Park Service using around the park. So. That said, so at the bottom of the Munising Formation, you've got a layer called the Basal Conglomerate. It's a pretty thin layer, and it probably formed in a kind of similar way to the Jacobsville sandstone. Geologists hypothesize that the sediment that makes this rock was probably carried along by streams and rivers from some kind of highland to the south or southeast. The next two layers, though, well, those are the big ones, so let's park here for a second. They're called the Chapel Rock Sandstone and the Miner's Castle Sandstone, and they formed near the sea. 
So to pick up our time traveling adventure, we're going to jump ahead a bit. It's actually been difficult for geologists to figure out exactly how old the Jacobsville sandstone and the basal conglomerate are, but for this part in the story, we have a pretty good time frame. That's because geologists have actually found fossils in these layers that give them a good sense of when they formed. So take a moment and imagine yourself on Earth 500 to 520 million years ago. And if you're like me from two weeks ago and have no idea what that means, here's some context for you. Once again, the Earth is very different. For one, the climate is much warmer on average than it is today, to the point where there's no ice at the poles. There actually is some life on land at this time, but it's mostly stuff like algae. The ocean, though, get your imaginations ready, because the ocean is thriving. Around this time, the Cambrian explosion happened. This is a period where life just dramatically diversified and all sorts of genuinely incredible alien species started showing up. Like there were trilobites and also these creatures that looked like predatory shrimp. And then there was this nightmare animal with five eyes that I'm pretty sure someone has put in a D&D campaign. Also, once again, land masses are in much different places. So at this point in history, what's now Michigan is actually in the Southern Hemisphere, and it's near the shore of an old ocean. This was a dynamic environment. Wind, waves, streams, and changing water levels were all at work here. So in a way, it was actually kind of similar to one of the beaches I visited at Pictured Rocks. And in fact, this is the environment that most of the Pictured Rocks bedrock formed in. Now, I just made a lot of claims about things that happened a long time ago and are objectively kind of weird. But one reason geologists can tell what life used to be like all those millions of years ago is because they can see the stories written in the rock. Like, there are ripples in the Chapel Rock sandstone, like the ones you might find at the edge of a beach. And then, of course, scientists have found fragments of aquatic trilobites and a variety of conodonts in the miner's castle layer. Those are relatives of jawless fish. So in some ways, the land has preserved the story for us. Now, today, of course, Michigan is nowhere near the equator. Uh, one look at our winters will tell you that. And also, we're not near a proper ocean either. But if you ever visit Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, you will almost definitely see what remains of this ancient environment. That's because the sand and sediment that made up those beaches and coastlines, that sediment hardened into rock. And you can see it everywhere. If you have a good eye, you can identify the Chapel Rock sandstone because it has big sweeping layers in it. It's best seen at Chapel Rock and also generally to the east of the Mosquito River. Meanwhile, the Miner's Castle sandstone, this one is more crumbly and it has smaller layers in it, but you can see it really clearly at um, Miner's Castle Rock and also generally to the west. As a side note, Miner's Castle Rock is one of my favorite places to see these two rock layers. It's decently accessible, you don't have to hike to get to the overlook, and also there is a distinct color divide where the Miner's Castle sandstone meets the Chapel Rock stuff. Now, to get to the final layer of the pictured rocks, and we're almost there, you have to skip ahead one more time to about 480 to 500 million years ago. At this point, Earth still looks pretty foreign. We're still hanging out at the edge of the sea, and the continents still don't look like anything I would recognize. But actually, at this point in time, Earth's atmosphere is finally breathable, so that would have been nice. This watery, unusual world is the place the Autrain Formation formed. It's another type of sandstone, but the key is it's harder than the rock underneath it. That meant it didn't erode as easily. So all throughout the pictured rocks area, the Autrain Formation makes kind of a ledge. And where there are ledges, there are waterfalls, including this little guy called Munising Falls, which I just think it's super cute and lovely. Now, this is probably a good time to make a really important point about the pictured rocks. Just because the rock is hundreds of millions of years old doesn't mean the cliffs are. Actually, okay, be right back. Okay, so the situation with the pictured rocks is a lot like building with Legos. This structure little wall thing I made is only a few seconds old, but these Lego bricks are probably 10 to 20 years old. So where do the actual pictured rocks cliffs come from? Well, at this point in our adventure, we've had a story about lava, one about some ancient highlands and seas. Now it's time for one more chapter, and that one is about glaciers. Here, we're gonna zoom way forward in time to like 
12,000 years ago. At this point, Earth actually looks pretty comparable to what you would see today. The continents are about the right shapes and about the right places, but the climate in the Midwest is, um, dramatically different. At this time, sheets of ice, literally a mile thick, had been creeping across what's now Michigan for years. And as they crept along, they dropped boulders and sediment, scraped the underlying rock, and just generally exfoliated the planet. As the glaciers moved, they eroded just about anything younger than the Autrain Formation, so any rock younger than about 480 million years old. If there used to be more rock layers here, and there probably were, given that there are plenty of younger rock layers in Lower Michigan, you can't really find them here anymore. Eventually, around 11,000 years ago, the ice did retreat, but even then, the famous sheer pictured rocks cliffs didn't exist yet. Instead, you had a steep slope of bedrock going down to the lake. To get some proper cliffs, we have one more stop to make, and I'm gonna call it Glaciers 2, The Earth Strikes Back. So here's the thing about glaciers. they are heavy. So when the ice retreated from this part of North America, that took a huge amount of weight off the land. Something I didn't realize is that when that happens, the Earth doesn't just stay compressed, it actually rebounds, kind of like a couch cushion. So the glaciers leave and the Earth's crust starts bouncing back. And by about 5,000 years ago, this has happened so much that what we now call Lake Superior has risen by about 40 feet. Geologists call this Lake Nipissing, and when the water levels were high, the wind and waves do what wind and waves do best. They eroded the nearby rock. They wore away that steep slope of bedrock, and as rock crumbled and other pieces fell away, you started to get something that looked like cliffs, along with some pretty noticeable landmarks. Like the archways of Chapel Rock, the rock that gives the Chapel Rock sandstone its name, were likely either started or formed by Lake Nipissing. Hundreds of years later, factors like erosion eventually made lake levels drop to something close to normal. And when all that water pulled away, well, it left behind some pretty spectacular cliffs. But here's maybe my favorite part. The story of pictured rocks absolutely did not end four, 5,000 years ago. Even today, water and wind and waves continue to make the story more interesting. Like the colors that give the pictured rocks cliffs their name come from groundwater seeping out of the rocks and depositing minerals. Like red and orange come from iron, copper gets you greens and blues, manganese and other organic materials give you black, and a compound called limonite gets you either white or brown. I've seen very credible sources say both. And really, all of this brings us back to Brad and that pontoon boat. What I love about that clip is that the first time I watched it, I thought it was just hilarious and interesting. But now when I see that clip, I mean, I still laugh. I think it's great. But also I see that clip as a continuation of a story that's been going on for millions of years. The story started with streams bringing sediment down into a volcanic basin. And today, much like 5,000 years ago, it continues with wind, waves, and crumbling rock, as it probably will for millennia to come. So if you hadn't heard of the area before, consider this your introduction to Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore. You can probably see why I called it one of the coolest places in Michigan. If you enjoyed this story, please consider sharing it with a friend or on social media. That is genuinely one of the most helpful things people can do. If you'd like to consider financially supporting my work, well, you can learn more about that at patreon.com slash There are some mind-bogglingly kind people over there. And finally, if you end up visiting Pictured Rocks after this video, feel free to send me some pictures. You can tag me on Instagram at alexis.writes or just, you know, leave me a comment below. And finally, one way or another, I'm so glad you're here. I hope this was interesting for you. I hope you learned something cool and I'll see you next time.